Okay, we got it. Your phone. Why? Will you see your mouth? No, no, I have enough to get us through this. I just need to get through the welcome with it. (laughs) Are you hearing all this? I'm hearing all this. (laughs) Grinning a lot. Yeah. Oh, it's the morning glory. I know it well. We're just recovering from having two grandchildren stay overnight here. They just left. That requires a lot of recovery. Oh, man. <laughs> a lot of recovery. Just the light here. Okay, and the sunshine will be obliterating everything soon. Yeah. There, you're hearing us okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that looks good. I'm ready for a second breakfast. Okay. Uh, I think I am going to do what you said I should. Shouldn't do. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well. Well, I can't find imagination. Where did I put this? Is that a love song? That's what I want to know. That's not the wall song, is it? Well, did you take it? You didn't take it, yes? All right, we've got you centered there. Ten minutes. It's twenty after, but we don't. We have seven minutes. Oh. Yeah, these readings are humdingers. I'll tell you. I love the second one. Ah, I gotta go practice some more. Yeah, I've got it set. I have it set on you, and we're not muted, so. I think all is well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you like it? Would you like a different ring gong? Did you know yours doesn't come over when you ha- hold it like that? It kind of goes dull. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. muted. Drat. Well, let. Huh. I've been meaning to tell you that for weeks. Sure. <laughs> I'm glad you've mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and ring whatever you've got. I think it's a little brighter. Yes, the little deers have just left. They were fun, but geez. Oh, oh man. They're not little, that's true. Well, when Nancy's granddaughter was here, we spent two days getting the cats out from behind the TV. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she had a way with them, huh? 
Uh, Reverend Amy, Mary Ellen, are you all set up with uh, reading? Got the reading all set up. And what I will do is just call on you and let you do Excellent. what you do. And then we'll uh, it's, it's a, it's a two-sentence introduction. <laughs> well, I'm going to do the spotlight right after the, the reading. So people are st or right after the children's story. Oh, okay. And sent a nice one too. So it'll be great. I am loving the technology that can keep us all together. <laughs> I am too, let me tell you. I'm never quite confident that there won't be glitches, but so far, it's worked out. Well, fingers crossed. Yep. I know what you mean about the cats going into hiding. Mine do the same thing. <laughs> they are not prepared to cope with a three-year-old. Do you have any idea where it was? Okay. Well, I couldn't go into hiding, unfortunately. But... Yes, but yours aren't whomping the cat with a fishy toy on a stick. No, they don't do that. No, they're not that way. I'm glad to be with a Millie. Let's see if she likes that. Sounds good, Barb. I'm, I'm not doing it on screen, though. I'm off screen. Do I have to be visible to do it? Yeah, that's fine. I need to be visible? No, you, have, you can do whatever you want. Oh, I think I will. Okay. The disembodied gun. <laughs> I love mornings. Well, I experienced them. Oh, oh boy.
A Communion of Heart and Soul by Brit Southworth. For the gifts of this day and for our community of spiritual nurture and compassion, we give thanks. We light this chalice as a symbol of our faith. May our many sparks meet and merge in communion of heart and soul. A communion of Good morning. I'm Reverend Amy Petrie Shaw. My pronouns are they, them, and theirs. And I'm speaking to you from land that is the traditional territory of the indigenous Iowa people. We ask that everyone keep your mics muted today during the entire service. We come together today, not because we're on one path, but on an almost infinite number of paths. Searching for our truths, we can share our journeys and our lives. And today's service is about being unafraid to take what nurtures you and leave the rest. To take it respectfully and mindfully from sources wherever you find value. It's also about not being afraid to reshape materials in ways that speak to you. Whether you're building an internally derived moral and ethical framework, or an externally shaped theology, you get to find the Legos of thought which call to you and to build them into your own logos or sacred word. Let's explore this together. Welcome to the First Unitarian Church of Des Moines. I'm Barbara Martin, she, her, and hers. We hope that you'll find here questions that stretch you people to befriend you, and liberal religious values that challenge you to join us in loving radically, serving justly, and growing spiritually and emotionally. Our gathering song is number 205, Amazing Grace. You'll see the words on the screen. Please join me in singing while you are muted. Thank you, Barb and Bruce. I'd like to ask Mary Ellen Miller to step up now, and she's got some words for us about the Kitchen Project. Thank you, Reverend Amy. Mary Ellen Miller, she, her, her. I'm chairing the Kitchen Project Fundraising Committee. As you can imagine, we had some well-laid plans for the month of January as we sought to reach this wonderful gift of a $40,000 match, but like everything else, COVID changed our plans. One of those plans was to have a pancake breakfast this morning to encourage people to show up to the building before our vote. So what we give you now is a virtual pancake. 
I can't even go anything. Okay. Oh. Please make sure everybody keeps your your microphones muted. Thank you. If you give a pig a pancake by Laura Numero, illustrated by Felicia Bond. If you give a pig a pancake, she'll want some syrup to go with it. You'll give her some of your favorite maple syrup. She'll probably get all sticky. So she'll want to take a bath. She'll ask you for some bubbles. When you give her the bubbles, she'll probably ask you for a toy. You'll have to find your rubber duck. The duck will remind her of the farm where she was born. She might feel homesick and want to visit her family. She'll want you to come too. She'll look through your closet for a suitcase. Then she'll look under your bed. When she's under the bed, she'll find your old tap shoes. She'll try them on. She'll probably need something special to wear with them. When she's all dressed, she'll ask for some music. You'll play your very best piano piece, and she'll start dancing. Then she'll want you to take her picture. So you'll have to get your camera. When she sees the picture, she'll ask you to take more. Then she'll want to send one to each of her friends. You'll have to give her her some envelopes and stamps and take her to the mailbox. On the way up, she'll see the tree in your backyard. She'll want to build a tree house. So you'll have to get her some wood a hammer and some nails. When the tree house is finished, she'll want to decorate it. She'll ask for some wallpaper and glue. When she hangs the wallpaper, she'll get all sticky. Feeling sticky will remind her of your favorite maple syrup. She'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if she asks you for some maple, for some syrup, she'll want a pancake to go with it. Thank you so, so much to Johanna Chang and to her mom, who was the unseen page turner. So thank you also, Sarah. We are going to have a spotlight now, as soon as I can make the transition here. And this is from Ann Mowry, who's going to talk to us a little bit about the kitchen project. Mm -hmm. Hi everybody, I'm Ann Mowry, co-chair of the Kitchen Committee. I'm here today to talk about a few of the things that you had hoped to 
put out to pasture when we've talked about a new kitchen. We are going to put it out to pasture. You know that uh, match that we were trying to make with the $40,000 donation from a generous congregant? We matched it. And we were hoping to raise $400,000 for the project. And we've made it. So this stuff's going to be history. Um, wow. What I'm hoping for is that you'll go to the congregational meeting at 1130 today and vote for the project. And then we're on to the architect and on to the board for the next steps. Stick with us. I am so excited. 190 plus people from the congregation have donated to this project. People are excited and so am I. Thanks so much for your participation. So the little little kid says, I'm going to give all my money to the church when I grow up. And the preacher says, you're awful young to have made that decision. But that's great. But why? Well, the kid said, because my daddy says you're one of the poorest preachers we've ever had. And I figured you were all we could afford. We're going to do the morning offering. I'll put the link in the chat. Give me just a second. And um, one half of our plate, as always, goes to the internal social justice work of the church and one half to our two Faith in Action partners, Knock and Drop and Just Voices. So, um, can you just turn it on? Hold on two seconds, technical issue. Can I have these? Use your ripple. Got it? There you go. Crank your volume up. And we're in business. Anything. Okay. Anything. All right. And we are at the offertory. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nancy. Turn the volume up. <clears throat> I want to take us into a period of prayer or silent meditation, especially after the morning we've just had. These are the words of Reverend Marilyn Sewell. I'm convinced that what is life denying, what is repressive and false will be known as such. And people who are basically good will follow a new way. Let us be some of those who step out and lead the way, who dare to be the light that blesses the world, that all the earth may be fair and all her people one, even on days like today. So please join me in one minute of thought, 
meditation or calming prayer. Just can't get those pictures out of your brain. I know. And I will make space available after the kitchen meeting today for anyone who needs time to talk about that, to decompress. So please know I will be there after the kitchen meeting if anyone needs to talk. This morning reminds us that we are so needed in the world for so many reasons. We're in this together. We're in this for days like this. We're in this knowing there are people in the world that do things like that. We're in this to be here for each other when it's bad and when it's good. Because that's what being a church is all about. And that's what being the church in the world is all about. You have someone to be there for your struggle and your laughter. I ask you to hold in your thoughts and your prayers this week. All those who are struggling, who are tired. All those who don't know what to do with themselves anymore. All those who are angry. All those who do sick and dysfunctional and hostile things because they're broken. Please let's share now in the chat the names of anyone that you know who could use some special care and attention this week. And as we type their names into the chat or call them out loud, may the love of this community hold them all. May the light of our community shine everywhere that there's darkness and pain, where there's evil. May the work of our hands and our hearts Support, aid, and comfort all those who hunger or thirst for food or water or justice or freedom. And may we never look away when we're needed. May those who are grieving be comforted. May those who are tired find rest. May the broken places be healed. May those who are filled with joy and laughter be abundant even on the darkest of days. Every week we light three candles, one for the joys and sorrows we've shared, and one for the names that we've written, and one last one for all of the joys and all of the sorrows that we hold in our hearts, 
but which remain unspoken here today. Our first reading comes from Ralph Waldo Emerson, American poet, transcendentalist, essayist, and he kept a journal every, most days in his adult life. And this is an excerpt from the journal and the sunshine has obliterated me, but just listen to these words. Okay. I will not live out of me. I will not see with others eyes my good is good, my evil, ill. I would be free. I cannot be while I take things as others please to rate them. I dare attempt to lay out my own road. That which myself delights in shall be good. That which I do not want, indifferent. That which I hate is bad, that's flat. Henceforth, please God, forever I forego the yoke of men's opinions. I will be lighthearted as a bird and live with God. Later, he wrote, make your own Bible, select and collect all those words and sentences that in your own reading have been to you like the blast of a trumpet out of Shakespeare, Seneca, Moses, John, or Paul. I think we'll have special music now from Karen Kramer, who will play the saxophone. She'll be playing um, Bruce on the piano, and uh, it is called Aria by Eugene Boza.
thank you. That was very nice. The second reading is an excerpt from Pray for Peace. It's a poem by California poet Ellen Bass. Pray to whoever you kneel down to. Jesus nailed to his wooden or marble or plastic cross, his suffering face bent to kiss you. Buddha still under the bow tree in scorching heat. Adonai, Allah, raise your arms to Mary that she may lay her palm on your brows. To, Sh to Shekinah, queen of the heaven and earth. To Inanna in her stripped descent. Hawk or wolf or the great whale, record keeper of time before, time now, time ahead, pray. Bay down, bay, bow down to terriers and shepherds and Siamese cats, fields of artichokes and elegant strawberries. Make the brushing of your hair a prayer. Every strand its own voice singing in the choir on your head. As you wash your face, the water slipping through your fingers, a prayer. Water, softest thing on earth, gentleness that wears away rock. If you're hungry, pray. If you're tired, pray to Gandhi and Dorothy Day, Shakespeare, Sappho, Sojourner Truth. Pray to the angels and the ghost of your grandfather. With each breath in, Take in the faith of those who have believed when belief seemed foolish, who persevered with each breath out, cherish. Pull weeds for peace, turn over in your sleep for peace. Feed the birds for peace, each shiny seed that spills onto the ground, another second of peace. Wash your dishes, call your mother, Drink wine, shovel leaves or snow or trash from your sidewalk, make a path, fold a photo of a dead child around your visa card, gnaw your crust of prayer, scoop your prayer water from the gutter, mumble along with a crazy person stumbling your prayer through the streets. Our centering song today is Be Thou My Vision, number 20 in the Great Book, words on a screen. Please join in as muted. Thank you so much, Barb and Bruce. What did we need that today? I want to start with a quote that some of you may know. 
in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Those are words from John in the Christian Bible. For Hellenistic Jews and early Christians, the word, and that's with a capital W, that was an idea that was way beyond writing or speech. For some, it was a co-creator with God. It was the web that held everything together. Um, the, the, the word for the word is logos. And logos was the bridge between divinity and the here and now. The world of the earth and the world of the spiritual. Logos was a real thing as far as Hellenistic Jews and very early Christians were concerned. And the mystic ideas behind this may not resonate with any of you today. But we may recognize a kindred idea. Words have power. Words create and shape and lead us through our lives. They build us up. They tear us down. As we saw this morning, they can cause havoc. Cruel words. You're stupid. You're fat. You're not wanted here. Kind words. You're beautiful. You're beloved. You're welcome. And words can go astray. For any of you who've ever played a game of telephone, you know this. Words can be misheard, mistranslated, simply mistaken. And I saw this myself years ago when I was growing up. We attended a very high church, Anglican church, and my mother was responsible for unlocking the cabinet at church where all the communion materials were kept. And she alone carried the key. And you can imagine this big, heavy, old key. It deserves its capital letters. And one Sunday, my younger sister and I were more fussy than usual. And mom got so distracted, she hurried us into church still holding on to the toys we had had in the car. And we sat down and my sister Tracy reached around me and she grabs mom's purse and she starts to rummage. Mm -hmm. And as the service starts, my mother realized with absolute horror that she had forgotten to unlock the communion cabinet. And she looked around for her purse and she saw it in Tracy's hands. And Tracy was about three at the time. And so mom thought quick, she poked me and she hissed, Tell your sister to put the key in the offering plate. Because it was too late and the service had started. And I leaned over and I whispered the message. And Tracy stopped playing with the purse and with her toys. And she looked at me very suspiciously. Really? She said. Yes, I said. And mom nodded. And so when the offering plate was passed, the usher took it from my sister with a really strange look. And it only took a few seconds for the rest of us to get why. Riding amid the envelopes and the cash was Tracy's toy, a small purple monkey, which is what she had heard. She had done exactly what she heard us say to put the monkey in the offering plate. Words have power, and not just the power to get a little child in real trouble. Words shape our world, and maybe the most powerful words are those that we consider sacred. The living tradition which we share draws from a lot of sources, several based on powerful written words, wisdom from the world's religions. When we start a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, the words are all there for us to look at. They give us a starting point. But our search for truth and meaning is our own. As a you, you, you don't get handed any text as true or written in stone. And no minister is going to tell you what text is right for you. And only you can decide if the writer meant a monkey or a brass key. We don't share a creed. We don't share a, a belief system, not even a fortune cookie that says you are here. We're the people of burning questions. So my question is, how do we take those powerful written words and make them our own? The story of the Jefferson Bible gives us some ideas about how to do this. 
1804, Jefferson bought Christian Bibles in English, Greek, and Latin, and he sat down and he opened the books and he got prepared to cut. He went through the text, looked for Jesus' greatest teaching, sliced out all his favorite bits and literally glued them into an empty journal. When he was done, he had created his own book, which he called The Philosophy of Jesus. And this was just for himself. And about 15 years later, he sat down again with more Bibles, a knife and scissors. And this time he wanted to create a personal Bible. He started from scratch and he cut and pasted until he got a book that he called The Life and Morals of Jesus of Nazareth. Today, we call it the Jefferson Bible. And the end product was astounding. It was a complete re-envisioning of the contents of the Christian Bible. He turned it into a source of rational morality where Jesus was fully human. There was no messianic thought, no mysticism, no miracles, no virgin birth. He changed the Christian Bible from something that said it was a revelation of the divine into a collection of moral teachings from the man, Jesus of Nazareth, a radical young teacher who taught about religious reform and human love. And the book ends with a line from the Gospel of Matthew. There they laid Jesus and rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. In Jefferson's Bible, death is the end. That Bible was one person's attempt to clarify for himself the words he held sacred without taking in anything he didn't want. Joan Didion, the uh, author of the White Album and a literary journalist said, I don't know what I think until I write it down. And Jefferson would have loved that thought. Ralph Waldo Emerson, as you heard this morning, was even more specific. He said, make your own Bible. Select and collect those words and sentences that you in all your reading that have been in all your reading like the blast of a trumpet out of Shakespeare and Seneca, Moses, John, and Paul. What does it mean? It means trust yourself to identify the sacred. Find what has meaning for you and be fearless in cutting away anything you find offensive or untrue. Words can create, and creation isn't always easy. But along with purple monkeys, one of the toys my parents believed in with all their hearts were Lego blocks. And I can tell you with complete honesty, each of his children had about 5 million bazillion Legos. And they reproduced each night. We had them in red and white and green and 500-piece boxes, strange skinny ones that worked like popsicle sticks. I used to build a lot with them and sometimes feel the pain of stepping on one at 3 a.m. And then some kind soul bought me a Lego kit, a, a Lego dollhouse with furniture, and it came with instructions, you know, the ones had a great picture on the box to show you what it was supposed to look like so you knew when you'd screwed it up beyond belief. I spent one day building it and then a few hours reading the instructions and then another day building it correctly. And when it was done, I looked at this thing and I hated it. I'd followed the directions and I built what someone at Lego felt should be every child's dream. I hated that color coordinated little thing. So I got out the rest of my Legos and I borrowed a few pieces from my cousins and I flat out stole the front half of my sister's Lego boat. I added more stories. I took out the weird windows in front. I mixed up the colors in the wall turned the boat into a garage, and when the furniture was too small for my new creation, I threw it back in the box and I built my own out of toilet rolls and tape. It took me weeks. And when it was done, in my eyes, it was beautiful, but it wasn't a Lego house anymore. It was my house. Gather your own Legos, not made out of plastic, but made out of words and pictures, the beginnings of thoughts. Be brave. Choose boldly from the colors and shapes around you, the words that call out to you like trumpet blasts, no matter what the source. Choose the kit you prefer and ignore the instructions completely. Repurpose your sister's boat and your cousin's gas station, some guy in the subway's windows. And from time to time, feel the pain as you step on a bit. 
words and ideas so sharp they make you wince and reconsider. Tear it down as you need to and build it again. Legos or logos, sacred words, building blocks, the joy, the truth, and the journey is making them your own. So happy building. Barb, you're muted. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> we extinguish the, extinguish the flame of the chalice, and we know that the light of truth and love and the warmth of this community go with us until we meet again. Our final song, 111, Life of Ages, verses 1, 3, and 4, and the words will be on your screen. Together, let us go out into the world to risk and to explore, to search and to build peace, ashe, and may it be so.